Now, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, that's what HCM uh, stands for, is a condition that is characterized by abnormal thickening of the heart muscle. It's a hereditary condition, and it's inherited as an autosomal dominant trait. By that, I mean that if a parent has it, there is a 50% chance they will pass the disease on to the offspring. The condition is due to abnormalities within the proteins that affect the contraction of the heart muscle. We call these sarcomeric contractile proteins. And it occurs in one in 500 people. So one in 500 people in this country have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. To the naked eye, uh, if, for a pathologist or a cardiologist looking at the heart, it, this what we see is a thickened heart muscle. And many people with this thickened heart muscle don't even know they have it and go to their graves at the ripe old age of 80 without having any symptoms. At the other extreme, there are some people who have this condition who die in their second or third decade. Most of these people are apparently well, very rarely have had symptoms, and many participate in sport. In fact, exercise is a major trigger for sudden death in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The condition may present with symptoms. Classic symptoms include chest pain during exertion, the chest pain is central and usually goes into the jaw or into the shoulders and is relieved by rest. Some people complain of breathlessness that is disproportionate to the amount of exercise being performed. Others may complain of dizziness or palpitation. And some may black out without any warning. So these are the cardinal warning symptoms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The condition can be identified during lifetime and relies on the combination of an ECG and a cardiac ultrasound. The cardiac ultrasound is the gold standard test and will identify the vast majority of people. But the ECG has an important role. Although there is no characteristic ECG pattern that causes hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the ECG may become abnormal four or five years before the hypertrophy appears, i.e. the heart muscle becomes thickened. So we can warn parents that their children have inherited a gene before we can actually see it on the cardiac ultrasound. So that's an important point. The other important point about the ECG is that certain athletes, when they run, get to develop big hearts and they get various changes on the ECG. It's important to recognize some of the changes that we see in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because knowledge of these changes are very useful in allowing us physicians to differentiate physiological hypertrophy occurring during physical training from pathological hypertrophy of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So what do we do once we've diagnosed it? There are three questions that people often ask to the doctor. Are you going to make my symptoms better? Am I going to die? Is this curable? Uh, and am I sure I'm going to get it? Three or four situations. So the th first thing is, yes, we can treat symptoms. The symptoms of chest pain or breathlessness are usually treated with drugs called beta blockers which reduce the amount of work that the heart has to do. Some people can die suddenly, and we need to be aware of the people who are at higher, highest risk. Well, p those people that have already suffered a cardiac arrest, we would not, and have survived, fortunately, we would not allow to have another cardiac arrest. They're the highest risk, and in those people, we put in something called a defibrillator, which is a special type of pacemaker that is implanted just under the left collarbone, and has leads that go into the heart that watch the heart day and night and will deliver a shock if the heart goes into a dangerous rhythm. This is not open heart surgery. It's a surgery that uh, is performed under local anaesthetic and takes 30 to 40 minutes and is often performed as a day case. Obviously, there are not, not everybody that presents to us with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has been a survivor of sudden death. Some people are actually very well. So how do we predict whether those people are at risk of sudden death? Well, fortunately, we have an algorithm that can allow that. And we look for five or six things. We look for a history of blackouts without warning. That's the first thing. We look for a history of sudden death from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in that individual. Then we turn our attention to the heart scan. and We look for the thickness of the heart. Very thick heart muscle means high risk. So if the heart muscle is thicker than three centimeters, that's high risk. Then we do a 24-hour ECG looking for episodes of ventricular tachycardia. These are potentially fatal heart rhythm disorders. Obviously in these people they don't occur for a long time, maybe, maybe four or five beats and they don't feel them. So we look for that. Finally we put the patient on the treadmill and we measure the blood pressure response during exercise. 
if you or I went on the treadmill, our systolic blood pressure, that's the top part of the blood pressure, should go up by 30 or 40 millimetres of mercury. But in some people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, this rise does not occur. It may be a very uh, minor rise, or the blood pressure may not rise at all. So if our individual has two of the five things I've just alluded to, we classify them at high risk, and we put in a prophylactic defibrillator as a safety measure, so that if they, if they ever do run into trouble with a fatal rhythm disturbance, it will save their lives.